Welcome to The E! Show with Neil Rabin. Founded in 2013, the EHL has become the college placement leader on the East Coast. Sit back and learn more about the next step in your junior hockey career. Welcome to The E! Show, presented by the Penalty Box Foundation. The Foundation's mission centers around their daily motto, We Take Care of our own as they help out all of those within the hockey community who have experienced a catastrophic event. Learn more at PenaltyBoxFoundation.org. What's up? My name is Neil Raven, and this is episode number 175 of The E! Show. On this week's episode, we feature a program that is racking up their total number of appearances at the Frozen Finals, the Railers Junior Hockey Club. Jake Basile chats with Sean Bertoni as the head coach and GM looks back on last season, but also ahead with his sights set on redemption this upcoming year. Both teams, EHL and EHLP, made their second Frozen Finals appearances this past March, and the sting of how each season ended has given Bertoni, his staff, and the rest of the Railers extra motivation this offseason. Tack on last year's 11 NCAA commitments, and on top of the success that they've had in the win column, Bertoni and the Railers have already helped 35 players advance to the next level in just four seasons in the league. The Railers have developed their own model, and they're chugging along. Hello, Isho. Today we are joined by Worcester Railers JHC head coach and general manager Sean Bertoni. Under Bertoni's watch, Worcester has completed its most successful season to date, hitting 30 wins for the first time in the 2022-23 season. Coach Bertoni also earned honors as the 21-22 EHL Coach of the Year, and he has seen back-to-back years of double-digit commitments. Coach, thank you for taking the time to be with us today. Love it. Thanks, Jake. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Huh? So I'd like to start this one off with something that may not have been as happy for you. It was the three game series versus BJR at Providence. And, you know, after game three, you brought your captains with you to the post game press conference. Charlie Odessa, Anthony Marchand and Stefan Kulhanek all spoke. Why did you want them involved in that moment? Um, I think it's important that, um, you know, it, Every day we're coaching, we put the work in, but it's really the players, right? It always comes down to the players, the players' development. It's all about those guys. They work extremely hard. Um, You know, at times they're, they're, they have to deal with some adversity and whatnot. And I thought uh, I've been spoiled. Look, I've been really spoiled since I started here with the leadership um, we've had in place. Like uh, I've had tremendous locker rooms uh, and it all goes back to the culture that they've uh, instilled, right? And uh, those three guys are very special, just like the captains before that and the team, et cetera. And I, I just thought it was a good moment to make it, again, about them. Uh, it should never be about a coach, whether you win or lose. It's always about the players. And um, particularly Charlie, you know, he's been here since I've been here, right? And and uh, at the end of the day, he's – He's wearing that name on the back of his jersey, and at times it was certainly hard for him. I mean, his growth, his maturity was off the charts so when we started with the premier team, when he started with the premier team. Um, he really took that leadership role serious, and um, it's so fun watching uh, as a coach, watching these guys develop as uh, young men into men, et cetera, uh, boys into young men, right? Like, Charlie was young when he was with the P team and uh, he did a phenomenal job, just like uh, Marshy and staff. And, you know, with, with Marshy, you know, he was here three years and, you know, an undersized guy to start straight out of a public high school and uh, he'll outwork anybody uh, pound for pound. One of the strongest, uh, toughest guys, you know, he played with basically two separated shoulders all year never asked for a day off. Um, he led, uh, by example, off and on the ice, a uh, tremendous young man. And, and stuff his maturity, too, uh, having him for three years, um, you know, a great relationship with him. He's a real fun guy. But he really kind of took that role. He, he got the guidance from Charlie and Marshy, and uh, he had a great year off the ice as well and, and being a leader. Um, 
And I just thought it, it, it ended our season, you know, it was a tough three games, obviously. And, um, you know, credit to BJR, they had a very good team. And um, I just thought it was kind of a perfect situation. Those three guys, uh, they were uh, everything we want in regards to representing the Railers the right way. Uh, and I'm going to miss those guys for sure. And in that interview, you referred to them as an extension of your family. Talk to any player on this team and, and they'll say the same thing. I mean, Connor McAleer said, you know, you, you come here and you have, you know, 20, 30 instant brothers. So, so what is it about the Railers that allows these bonds to form? Yeah, again, credit to the players, right? Like, I, and I can't say it enough. The, the locker rooms I've had uh, have been tremendous. Uh, they all um, dedicate themselves to each other. Uh, very, very unselfish people. Um, it makes my job a lot easier. It makes our staff's job a lot easier. Um, it's the culture they've built here. And uh, it really is. It, it, we're unique in the way we do some things. And, you know, you're not just coming here and playing junior hockey. Like, you're developing and forming these relationships that uh, are going to last forever. Um, and, you know, for me in particular, like seeing these returners come back and talk about our program, like training camp, for example, and Drum and, and Anastasi and Pim and those guys come back and they talk about uh, not just the success they've had, but what they've learned. Like I can just sit back and kind of soak it all in and, um, I get so much of that, that uh, it, it's it's why we coach at the end of the day, right? So um, they really do things for each other um, and uh, they take it to heart. Like we preach that, you know, come September when everyone first arrives and everyone buys in. It's tremendous to see. And then you see it evolve throughout the year, right? But um, I've been very lucky to see it each year. Like these guys – they hang out together. They do everything together off the ice. Um, and, and they really love each other, which is awesome. And one thing that both you and, and Chuck mentioned at camp was the fact that most of the EHL team was at Championship Sunday at Providence when the premier team was playing. You know, why do you view it? You know, some teams have you know a, a kind of a split between the two levels. Why is it so important that you, to, for, that you think the team should be one unit despite those two different levels? Yeah, it, it, another thing, like I didn't ask them to do that. So it's tremendous just to see them support their brothers. They really do take that to heart um, and they really care for each other. And, you know, that was sort of our methodology when we started this, right? From Coach A, um, didn't want, you know, two separate teams on two islands. We do everything the same. Our strength and all of our approach, right? Our strength and conditioning, um, our special teams, the way we play. Uh, from a systematic standpoint, everything's the same. Guys go up, guys go down. Uh, but that that support, it, they live together, right? So they're always around each other. And that support is um, awesome to see as well. Um, like there's no, you know, EHL and EHLP here. It's your Rilla, uh, your Rilla for life. And uh, yeah, that was really cool to see all those guys sitting there and cheering on their uh, their teammates. We call them teammates right so uh, it was really cool it was a neat thing so to get into the the nuts and bolts of the EHL team this past season it was a very new group it did not have a lot of returners and it it had a lot of rookies so what challenges do you think that kind of posed for you early on um yeah a little maybe a you know training camp we had a different approach to how we were going to run our training camp uh last year uh due to that uh having new guys coming from all different teams and and coaching styles so um it's always a challenge the beginning of the year uh i think if you look at our records in september and then where we finish uh i think it's important uh that you get better throughout the year individually and as a team and um, when you have new guys and the way we play uh, from a systematic standpoint, it, it can take some time. And I think guys really trust the process. And uh, I have to be patient. Our staff has to be patient with certain guys that it's new to them, right? So definitely a challenge. But I also lean on our veterans. I lean on our captains to um, 
help in that regard. Uh, these guys study, like they approach it like an academic subject. Um, you know, the first month they have notebooks every single day. They study uh, when they go back to uh, the apartments. Um, is it, uh, it takes a little bit of time and, um, you know, it's, it's no frustration, right? It's just how we all learn. Um, and then it gets me understanding these guys a little more. You know, some guys are visual learners. Some guys need one-on-one -on -one time. Some guys need small group. It's it's like I'm back in the classroom teaching. It's the same thing. We just the subjects hockey. And I remember, like you said, the, the big transition from you know your record early on in the year to later on in the year. You had a five-game losing streak in October, and you had said to me and Trev that you had never coached harder than that in your life. You know, from a day-to-day -day being at the ranks standpoint. You know, what did that mean exactly? Yeah, I think sometimes you get coaches get wrapped up. Um, we may press a little or, um, you know, we want the results because we want the results for our players, right? And the players want to win. Um, so well, obviously we're very competitive. We want to win as well, but that's not, you know, the ultimate goal. Um, like you're going to learn throughout the process of, living here and being part of the organization. But, you know, I think at that time, it was like I was doing extra video by myself with uh, certain players and just putting so much in. And it's like, man, like I just got to take a deep breath and be patient and trust the process, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it's a long season, right? There's ups and downs throughout the season. And as long as we continue to, uh, move forward it, it pays off it pays off but um, yeah like you, you can get frustrated throughout a season right and uh, you know you want guys like to stay on course um, just trust the process and that's a lot of coaching nowadays right it's not uh, x's and o's it's you know if you have a couple bad games right are they going to stick to the game plan they're going to stick to the script is what we call it and uh, again credit to the guys they did and the finish was very different, like you said, in the top five in the league. When did you realize things were starting to come together for Worcester? Um, yeah, that's a tough one. I thought, um, you know, the unfortunate uh, incident or passing of uh, Corbin's father, um, I thought our team really, it was the first you know, tough situation we had to deal with uh, early in the year. And um, again, the guys really supported him. Um, you know, he had to leave the team for a little bit to be with his family. And uh, when he came back, it, it was tremendous, right? Like, he, you know, he obviously scored that game winning goal in overtime, but uh, just a tremendous kid, uh, such a mature kid. That's why he'll be one of our captains this year. Um, but I thought during that sort of uh, portion of the season, we really came together as a team and started playing for each other. And um, it, it was it was just phenomenal to watch, really. Um, he's, uh, he's such a good guy and always puts his team first and uh, no kid should have to go through that. So uh, I thought we really uh, supported him well. And, um, you know, when he came back we we just started to gel there I thought and when he when he scores that winner and everybody you know floods the ice to support him what's going through your mind as a coach just goosebumps right like that you know um I think it was his first goal of the year yeah, if I believe true. right yeah. um it's like dad's watching him right yeah. like it was really cool and uh yeah, I couldn't be more happy for him. Um, it, it, yeah, I, I'm still kind of speechless, right, that it happened that way. And uh, it was just uh, – it was really cool to see and, and be a part of, right, because it's always – the coach, you're, you're just a part of it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're teaching and you hope they're learning and you're just a part of kind of their memories and throughout the season the steps they're taking and – you know, stuff they're going through on and off the ice. Uh, we, we went through a lot off the ice. We still are. Um, but uh, it's just like I was just enjoying the ride, to be quite honest. And uh, I, I was speechless after that game.
And, uh, you know, shout out Corb, not his last overtime winner throughout the season, only defenseman with multiple overtime goals in the EHL season yeah. last year. But uh, another t- turning point for this team was uh, Jack Lee coming back. And he did leave midseason. And, you know, with him and, and Jack Weinman kind of being, you know, the one-two punch offensively, were you, you know, worried about, worried at all about, you know, the team's production with Jack Lee leaving midseason? Um. You know, Jack certainly provided a spark, provided a lift. You know, he was with us the year prior and he knew the way we play and he's he's a competitive guy. Um, so losing him, I thought guys stepped up right away. Um, I know talking to other coaches, you're always worrying about where where's your scoring going to come from, right? So you lose a guy that, um, you know, off the top of my head, I think he was almost a goal a game guy. He's definitely point a game guy. Um, so you're always worried about that, but I thought we, you know, for example, our power play, I think stayed one all year uh, with him without him. Uh, but Jack was, uh, he really provided uh, a lot of offense for us. He was, uh, he created a lot of space out there. Um, he was a tremendous shot. So losing him, I, yeah, we were a little, I was a little worried, right? But I thought um, guys just stepped up. Uh, we had four lines. We play four lines. Um, you know, guys that are playing special teams get more time, or you might guys that are a little more offensive get more offensive zone faceoffs, whatever. But we we had a lot of guys step up and fill that role, and we were just so much more towards the end of the year sound defensively. Um, from the goalie out, we were very good in our own end. Uh, we managed the puck well. Um, you know, we got it out, we got it up, we got it in. Uh, it's kind of how we play. We're a North team and um, that's how we generate our offense off the rush or, or in zone offense. So I thought we did a really good job uh, in our D zone and breaking out because, you know, good exits lead to good entries. So uh, again, guys bought in and, and uh, we continue moving forward. I'm glad you brought that up because defense, the team's best improvement was defensively allowing more than three goals in seven out of the first 14 games of the season, then going all the way from November 18th to March 2nd without letting up more than three goals. Did, were there big changes made or was it just a matter of, like you said before, patience and, and waiting for the guys to adjust and learn? Yeah, obviously we had a different lineup from game one to you know, the end of the year, but I just thought uh, guys learned, uh, they were learning, they were understanding, uh, you know, we teach, we break it down and this is what we do. This is how we do it. And this is why we do it. And I think it's very important uh, to teach that way. Uh, guys want to know obviously what we're doing first um, and then how to do it uh, as coaches. Are we doing our job teaching uh, the proper technique how are we defending one-on-one, right? How are we defending three-on-three below the dots, et cetera? Uh, and then we teach why we do it. Guys want to know. Um, kids love structure, right? So they want to know why we're doing this. We're not just doing this because we think it's the best way to play. Like we've tried it the other way and uh, we're always open to communication and dialogue, but uh, we feel this puts the team in the best spot. So I thought guys... Um, we're at the peak now of really understanding how we're going to defend. Um, I thought from the goalie position out, we were very strong uh, with both our, our goalies. Xavier had a tremendous year. Um, we just defended hard. We were hard to play against in our own end. Um, so I think it was a little bit of both, Jake, but uh, I think guys really understood what we're doing and, and bought in and they executed at a high level. And we didn't give up many shots, which certainly helps. And another reason for the 30-win season was the Railer Showcase record. You guys were undefeated at the Big Four showcases and only one loss overall. So, so why do you think the Railers stack up well against teams that you don't see a ton? Yeah, I don't really know, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> I'm sort of a data-driven guy, and I do change things up. Like, guys don't have to go to the rank as early as a, as a regular season game. Um, you know, I also think, you know, guys just like looking at something different, right? Playing a different team, not knowing um, really the opponent as much. Like, we we don't know the self that much uh, at the end of the day. 
Uh, we know the teams in our division or even out of our division. It seems like we played more teams out of our division than teams in our division last year. Um, I think they just, they, they get a level of excitement to play somebody different. Um, I think they like having the number of college coaches in the stands to showcase their abilities. Yeah, I think that those are the, the sort of bullet points. I, I wish I could put my finger on why uh, we do. It seems like we play better or just our record shows that. But uh, yeah, something to kind of dig into a little more. Another piece of the history this season was Stefan Kulhanek breaking the EHL all-time wins record. I, the team really uh, rallied around that. What was that day like in the build up to it? And, you know, is that kind of like a moment that you view like, a, hey, that's why I coach? Yeah, again, going for the ride, right? Just sitting back and watching it. Uh, you know, obviously playing that position, like it was really cool uh, to see stuff break the record. Um, it was never about him, though, which, you know, obviously I, that's what I loved about Steph. Like, um, you know, I, I think he gave up one of his starts. Uh, I think he was about to break it and he gave up one of his starts. So Xavier could have, have a start. Xavier's dad was here and that just shows his character. Um, and I, again, like the team, you know, I, I believe like it was in the back of the mind, they wanted to do it for him, but you know, at the end of the day, no matter who we put in the net, uh, like our, our team always wanted to play hard in front of our goalie. So, uh, but Steph, him and I have a really good relationship. And it was just, uh, you know, that's a memory he's going to live with, right? Uh, it, it, I'm glad I was a part of it. Uh, but then after that, he started, you know, shooting for open nets and whatnot. And I had to settle him down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> That was uh, Chiefs game three, right? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Of one nothing. Playoff game. He's going. He's going for an empty net. A couple of years one. ago, he he hit one of our defense. He tried doing it. He hit the kid right in the cage. Uh, I'll never forget. It was it was Hess. Derek Hessinger uh, dented his cage and like steps. Like let's secure the win. It's not about you scoring a goal right now. <laughs> he's a confident guy. Yeah. <laughs> And as, as for your other two captains, Charlie and Anthony, I mean, they're, they were kind of, you know, blue collar players and the Railers are at their core, a blue collar team. How do they embody, you know, what it means to be a Railer? Yeah. Uh, you know, to be sort of blunt or direct, I'm shocked they didn't have more college offers. I think they are extremely college ready. Uh, they play a 200 foot game. Um you know, there's nothing really sexy about their game. They play the right way. They play with a uh, level of detail and structure and uh, all those little things coaches talk about, right? Uh, good wall play, uh, finishing checks, uh, communication, blocking shots, um, D-zone coverage. Charlie played against every team's top line all year. Um, and we knew you know, Charlie will be the first to admit he's not, you know, going to light up a score sheet and be a, a prolific uh, goal scorer. But I put a lot on him and uh, he had a great plus minus. He was very good in the circle. Anytime we had an important face off, he was taking it, uh, particularly in our own end. Uh, he was out there under two minutes. He's going to definitely, you know, log up the. Uh, play a lot of those seconds there, uh, those crucial seconds. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, I, those guys are sort of a coach's dream, to be quite honest. Um, and uh, they know who they are. Uh, they, you know, I say stay in your lane, know who you are, right? And they, they did that every day. Uh, but they were, you know, they were animals in the weight room. They, they uh, led by example. Um, again, played hurt. Um, anything we asked from a coaching staff, they did. Uh, they're 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 going to be missed for sure. And we have to uh, address, you know, the the passing of Coach Mike Adessa, general manager of the Railers, your mentor, father figure of the Railers for years. You know, was this just the hardest thing you've ever had to go through as a coach? You had to ask. Huh? It's Fun Friday, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
yeah, obviously, you know, one of the hardest things I went through in life, to be honest, I lost my dad two years ago, uh, but it was out of season on Father's Day. So it was a little different. I, you know, um, Coach A just, I, I can speak hours about him, right? Um, just a tremendous, tremendous coach, right? That's what he did. Um, and he helped so many people. Uh, whether you were with him or not, he was always just looking to help. Uh, I remember the kid last season uh, didn't play for us, and he got him to work out with our tremendous strength coaches upstairs just to help his game and development. And there's not many people that will do that, right? So, uh, yeah, it was, uh, again, some adversity for sure we had to deal with. And, um, you know, obviously having Charlie on the team and, uh, you know, the Odessa family owning this and Mike around helping whenever he can, sacrificing his time. Like, it, it was hard. It was really hard. Um, and that, that's like one game I won't forget, right? Like, uh, we played the Seahawks. And we won in overtime. And I'm like, you know, coach wasn't going to let us lose that game, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah. And, you know, I have big shoes to fill, obviously. And, Hopefully I can do it uh, with him looking down and, and, and pleased with what I'm doing, but you know, he'll, he'll always be pushing me to do something different, something better. Right. That's how you grow. So uh, just, I, I was happy to uh, learn from him and spend uh, these past four years uh, with him. With his fingerprints all over yourself and, and this team and, and still, you know, plenty of the players that are coming back, you know, how do how will his, and still be fell as, as we kind of move on always always um you know some of the sayings he has or had uh, like i'm using now i don't even realize it <laughs> uh, he's he's in me for sure uh, a, a friend of mine uh, who also coaches in the leagues he'll he'll catch it every time i say something he's like who, who am i talking to here my, big Mike or Sean, right? So it's uh, it's cool, man. He, we're doing this for him, um, you know, and he'll always have a presence there uh, with me for sure. Uh, whether it's recruiting or on the ice practice, he's always going to be in the building. And um, yeah, he's going to be missed, obviously. It'll, it'll be different the whole year, right? Starting from training camp. Like he was always there. I, you, you saw him in the corner. That's why we put out the chair for him. Um, yeah, it's going to be, a, a, again, it was, it'll be emotional. And uh, continuing to look ahead, you know, a lot of returners this upcoming season. And one of, one of that, one part of that group is the, you know, your top line at the end of the year, Connor McAleer, Jack Weinman, one of your captains for the upcoming season and, and Thor Hansen. you know, you, were, you talked about earlier in the interview, how you're always kind of wondering, where the offense is coming from, you know, how much does, you know, having those guys back impact your outlook on, on the upcoming season? Um, like, I don't have expectations going in. I never forecast anything. Like, we got to come ready to work. Um, you know, one of the things we always talk about is your competitive spirit. Like, you need to compete hard every day. You gotta, uh, sort of cliche, right? Like, you got to get better every day in practice. Uh, it's nice having returners that can push each other. Uh, practices shouldn't be friendly. Um, you know, guys should get under their skin. Like we, we have guys this year that are competing for a lot of spots, um, which is great. I feel like we haven't had that in the past. Um, and it's not, it's not to create anxiety. It's not to put stress on everybody. It's, it's all about competing. Uh, so it's obviously nice having, I'd say a core group coming back uh, from, you know, the defensive standpoint and up front. Um, but those guys are going to come in ready to go. Uh, they know what's at stake. They want to get, you know, a college offer, get a great education. They chose to stay with us and uh, looking forward to having them back and, and see what, what the year looks like. You did mention on the blue line, you will have some returners. Five of them, including another captain, Corbin Mealy, another guy making the jump, and Aiden Swain. 
So I, I know you say you don't like to forecast, but do you think with that experience that will kind of once again be one of the strong points of this team? I mean, it should be. Um, again, we're always the way we coach, uh, the way we play the way we defend uh we should always be good in our own zone um but again it's nice having guys back that understand what we're trying to accomplish how we defend um again why we do it right so um that learning sort of process won't be there um early in the year whereas if you have new guys coming in uh it's hard to defend it's hard to be a defenseman uh, and the way we play, like you got to be able to skate, you got to be able to be physical and strong. Um, you know, playing wing is easy. Playing uh, up front's easy to me. Um, so it, it it is. It it should help us having returners on uh, on the blue line for sure. And to touch on another. The we, I mentioned Swainer and now Max Bolak, another guy, three year railers who will become EHL guys in year three. You know, what did you look for in yep. them to, to say that these guys are ready for the jump? Yeah, both have worked extremely hard um, off the ice. And uh, again, seeing their maturity, uh, particularly with Max, um, it's, it's really, it, it, he's come a long way off the ice. And I think that's important, right? And um, if they're in good headspace and, uh, have a good frame of mind, they'll, they'll play better on the ice. So uh, two tremendous guys, different types of personalities. Uh, Aiden's a little flashy guy, right? Max is a little more quiet, but uh, I, we love having both of them. And uh, I look forward to, to coaching them and for them to have uh, big years. And one last, you know, look at the, at, at some, at some, up at, uh, you know, the next season, uh, another newcomer who had a fantastic camp was Marcus Christophides. A uh, ton of skill, great shot, and some NCAA experience with him. You know, how much of an asset do you expect Marcus to be? Yeah, we'll see. Um, he did. He had a great camp. Uh, he's a very good skater. He's very explosive. Um, looking forward to to coaching him. Uh, looking forward to see how he progresses. Uh, but playing against he's an old four and he's played against 25 year olds right yeah. uh, at the college level he's played against bigger stronger faster guys so um he should be ready to go he dedicates himself off the ice um i remember recruiting him out of marlboro uh, a lot of guys you know i would ask about him they're like oh he's way too small uh and i like that sort of underdog right and um you see him off the ice and he lives in the weight room. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, look forward just like all the other guys coming in and we look forward to it. And uh, I think they'll come to realize we, we have something special here and we do things the right way. And like you said earlier, we're very family oriented guys really care for each other. Uh, we have obviously the resources, right? We, we offer a lot to our guys and, um we're, we're a close-knit uh, organization and uh i said why wouldn't you want to be a railer right you see it um and some guys though it takes time like once they come here like oh my gosh like the level of coaching um the time you know our strength coach our athletic trainer like all the time these people are putting in it's for them um and you know at the end of the year hopefully these guys have a lot of options for for school and uh, play at the NCAA level. So finally, to, to wrap things up, the most important thing in this league for any team is college commitments. Another year of double-digit players going from the Railers to the NCAA. The alumni at camp, every every single one of them used the word accountability when they talked about you know the main thing they walked away with from their time in Worcester. You know, why is that such a core value in preparing young men? Yeah, it, it's it's one of the ultimate ones, right? Um, you know, we are detail oriented people and we have very high expectations of ourselves as, as leaders of this program. Um, and we get a show by example. And, uh, I think that's why guys go through such the early kind of learning process is 
if we tell you to line up on the blue line, line up at the blue line. It's not line up two feet beyond the blue line. Like we are going to hold you accountable to that. We're not just saying this to say it, right? And I think sometimes guys get away with a lot. So when they come here, it's sort of an adjustment period. Um, look, it's like I tell my own kids, like if you can't do a simple task of brushing your teeth or making the bed, how are you going to overcome things in life, right? So it's, uh, it's something we feel that's very important and it's how they learn. It's life skills here. And um, again, all guy at the end of the day, these guys want structure. They want to be held accountable. And, you know, we'll laugh about it now. Like Tyler Anastasi, he loved it, right? And uh, he was a guy that struggled at first. And it, it was um, cool to see at training camp what he talked about uh, with how, you know, he was a highly skilled defenseman. Like he got away with a lot and we didn't allow him to get away with stuff. And, um, they really eat that up and they know we care for them deeply and uh, we're going to continue to do it and move forward. Great coach. Well, we can't wait to, I can't wait to be with you guys another year. It's going to be a lot of fun, just like it was this past year. And we can't wait to see what uh, Worcester cooks up in uh, another year for you with the team. So thank you. Yes, sir. We love having you too, Jake. You know that. Thank you. And uh, just make sure you pass along the message. Um, You know, I keep offering, I, I keep challenging commissioner Ravin to a uh, game of golf here. I think he's hiding from me. You know, I got to beat him before the season starts. Yeah. Right, so pass that message to him, please. No problem. I think that's why he's done the interviews <laughs> this year. He doesn't even want to That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, Jake. Thanks uh, for all you do. Thank you, coach. Take care. Thanks for listening to The E-Show. Learn more at easternhockeyleague.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Also, be sure to subscribe and get notified when next week's podcast is released.